Now we can finally talk about naming convention and variable scope. So like I spoke before about this, routines, we usually start with an uppercase letter. So my routine. This is so that you can identify when you see this, you can identify that it's a routine. For global variables, we can start with a G, indicating that it's a global variable, and then start with uppercase after that. So it's always camel case anyway. And memory variables, we can start with an M and then carry on with the camel case to indicate that's the memory variable. And for local variables, and those are the ones that you're going to put inside the routines, They're, they are the only local variables. You, you actually don't use the G for global or the M for memory variable. You just write down the variable starting with lowercase. Now, you don't have to do this. This is just naming convention and it will help reading your code later on. So what is a global variable and a local variable? Well, a local variable, it's only available locally inside a routine, for example. If I try to access this variable, I'm, I'm var setting, let's say it's a 10. Uh, let's do a different number there. If I try to get this variable, and I say no to my var, let's get that variable that is inside that routine. If I try to do that, <clears throat> I just get my var, okay? Meaning that that variable doesn't exist, so it's just going to output the text that is written there. Now, even if I call this routine right before my note and I say routine call my routine, even if I call it, I'm going to have the same exact result because it's a local variable. It's not accessible outside its scope, but I can access. This is a global variable, which means it can be accessed anywhere. If I now, if I, for example, get my, this global variable, and I just do a note there with that global variable, I'll reload. Now I get 10, I get that global variable. And I can access that global variable anywhere. So I can, uh, let's say, I'll set that global variable inside my routine to 20. So I'm running that routine. I'm setting the variable now to 20. And let's see what happens. Okay, now it's 20, because that routine turned that variable into 20. And I'll illustrate this even further by commenting out the routine. Now the routine didn't run, the variable is still 10. Now, every time you set a variable or define a, you, a variable inside of a button, it's going to be a global variable. So if it's outside the, of a button, or inside of a button is every time you set a variable or define a variable, it's going to be a global variable. So if I wanted to, to set, to create a new variable inside of this button, and even if I go say set uh, and say my new var equals 50, and let's say I do another button down here my button 2 and I get output my new var let's just clear that out I don't need that routine for now reload so my button let me just reload this first if I run this second button first is saying note my new var okay my new var says just my new var because it hasn't been set. But if I run the first button that actually sets my new var and then run the second button that outputs my new var, I now get 50. So you kind of get the picture. So the proper way to write this new variable, I, I just did that by clicking here, then pressing control and clicking elsewhere to get another one of those. So the right way you should be doing this is by press uh, by putting a G before and then starting with uppercase, so camel case. It's just indicating that that is a global variable. So I made a bit of code to exemplify loops and how they work and what how the variables in them work. So we talked about loops in the past and what I have here is a routine that just 
loops five times to nothing, but uses a loop count variable. And this is loop count variable two, which is a loop count from the routine. I have an I button, this is my button, uh, that loops through a, another different loop and has a loop count. Then I have a button to run the routine, I have a button to check loop count, and I have a button to check the second loop count. Okay. So if I go into ZBrush, I really love this. Right, let's check loop count. It just says loop count, so loop count's not set, it's not a variable. It's just in the same thing goes for loop count too, the second button. If I run the routine, and the routine loops five times through loop count two, and I check loop count two, nothing happens. Nothing happens is not is not being set because inside the routine it's local, right? But if I run this button and this loop is inside the button, and even if it was outside of a button, not inside of a button or a routine, the behavior would be the same. So if I run this, let's press my button. So I, I run this loop 10 times and loop count is the variable that was set for this loop to count how many times the loop has run. And then I go check my loop count Boom, I get nine. Nine because it's zero based, it starts counting at zero. So zero is like the first time it runs and all the way up to nine, which means that you run 10 times. So you need to be careful with loops, especially if they're not inside of a routine, because this is actually a global variable. So I would say G for global loop count and you probably want to shorten this so you'd say lc for loop count and you say for my so the button name for example okay so be careful with the loops they are global if a, uh, the loop count is global if it's placed inside of a button or and you can also use a loop outside of a button you can actually use a loop here if i can write down loop you can use a loop here and if you use a variable for the count be careful so you can create your own variable and you could say var set create g because it's going to be a global variable g my var you could say that zero and then every time instead of using this you can also use do this instead and say var inc and that will increment that variable by one every time the loop is run so this would uh let's grab that variable delete that simplify stuff you could actually do this, and then if you check that variable, after running that, of course, now it gives you the amount of times that it's run, because it's this is not zero based. It started with zero every time it's run here. The first time, instead of being a zero, it becomes a one because it increases it. So you can do it like that as well if you want to count how many times a loop has run. So be careful with this, and I hope this has clarified the, the scope of variables for you. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Share this playlist with your friends so other people can learn as well as this script. It's a really cool, it's simple language. Don't forget to like and subscribe and um, check out my Gumroad, and I'll see you in the next